Hi, I'm Stuart Asher, the writer-director of Hashtag Stuck. And I'm Madeline Zima, the lead actress of Hashtag Stuck. And this, this is, is Screen, Screen Dreams. Dreams. Nice to meet you. You too. Let me ask you something. Why do girls do it? Why give a guy your phone number if you're not interested? Why set up a date if you don't intend on keeping it? This is on behalf of my entire gender. Since you were stood up, an apology. Keep them coming. It is loosely based on a true event. Oh. I never told her that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, one day, um, you know, after being in Hollywood for a while, it takes a long time to get bigger and bigger movies made, and I wanted to do something that I can execute, small and contained, and just focus on what mattered, which was story and acting. And I wanted to do something that I felt like I can have total control over, and I had this small little incident that happened to me that um, I was in traffic with someone I did not want to be in traffic with, and hence born hashtag stuck. Let's just say in Hollywood, there's a happy ending. But in real life, maybe not. No, I just wanted to cut loose just one night, just for once in my life, you know? One night with no expectations. This is what I get. <laughs> Sorry. Well, at least I know why I never did this before. Uh-huh. What? One of my biggest pet peeves in romantic comedies are the way the women characters are handled. It's always this, she'll just accept everything and come back to the guy at the end when he learns his lesson and it's very male-centric and that's not how life is. And one of the main focuses in writing the film that I really wanted to make sure I nailed, especially being a man writing a woman part, is to make sure that it read for a woman, by a woman, for a woman, you know? So, in writing the film, I thought um, I really tried to put myself in my mom and my sister and ex-girlfriends' heads. Definitely, at times, I used some actual dialogue that I jotted down on a notepad somewhere. I'm like, this is great. You know, there's definitely some real life experience, you know, in the film. Um, but I think truth is really what I always wanted to, you know, accomplish when I wrote the script. This was my first real lead role that there's nothing to hide behind. So I really tried to work on authenticity and it was just fun, honestly. It was like one of the most fun things I've ever worked on. Although we had such a tight amount of time to do it in, like we did this in 10 days, which for a feature length is like kind of borderline insane. And um, let's just go there. It's hey, insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. But, but it all worked <clears throat> out like, like, yeah. I don't think I appreciate your tone. Five minutes of silence! What? Did you just give me a timeout? No talking. The expedited schedule really helps this intensity. And because it was all actor, you know, relationship driven speaking, to do a half a page a day over the course of four months would have really take, sucked out all the air of their chemistry. And I think, you know, in a tribute to Madeline and to uh, Guy, Joel David Moore, who plays Guy. Um, I mean, the two of them were so tit for tat, boom, boom, boom. Each person elevated each other's sort of performance. Like, I'm stepping up here, are you gonna meet me? And I feel yeah, like that shows on was, screen. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I was working on another film immediately before, and I literally finished the last day of that movie and started stuck the next day. So all the time that I had to prepare was the night before every night before, and we were doing upwards of 10 pages a day, sometimes 14 or 15 pages a day, which is a lot. It's a lot to do on a TV show, let alone like a film schedule. <laughs> yeah, I left my um, car at the bar, so. I found Madeline, like, I mean, it was literally a, a lucky strike of, of lightning, in a sense, I mean, Stuart was also struck by lightning. I was also speech. struck by lightning, by it the way, two months ago. It was on the local news. Ago. You yeah. were struck by lightning? Yeah, I, I remember when people got struck by lightning on Venice Beach. We had other actors committed to the film 48 hours before. And this is what I mean by a you know, strike of luck. Um, because of schedules and whatnot, last minute they dropped out. 
and we had already spent all our money creating this traffic jam, getting everything together. We're a very low budget film. There's no stop down and recast. You gotta go. And I'd always been a fan of Madeline's. We knew each other through, um, a, mutual through a mutual friend personally, um, more acquaintances. Yeah. And but I've always had a you know was a huge fan of her work. And you know the opportunity knocked, and um, I was like, let's go for it. Let's 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 see if she'd do this. So I got a bit of bad news. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't see any sign of a car wreck. But that's not to say that further down the line, there's not like mass carnage everywhere. Oh well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. I, mean, I just, I just was so excited to, to, kind of show them my colors, you know, and 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 this is the first opportunity that I, I have had to kind of do that. I've gotten very close to big roles through many, many years of my career. And um, this is the first time that something was mine and I got to kind of create what I wanted to create. And I was very, very lucky to have such a, an amazing partner on scenes where I couldn't quite laugh because I was upset that I maybe bungled a line a little bit before. He would make a fart noise so that it would get a genuine laugh out of me. And, and that kind of like give and take relationship on a set, it, it, it's like I can't take all the credit for it. I, I can only kind of say that I had like a good, a good play partner. I was just like, Joel, do the fart thing, because that was her trigger for some reason. <laughs> She's a big child. I don't know. But I am. you make a you make a little fart noise and this girl laughs. And poo poo pee-pee. It always yeah. works for me. And most of those genuine reactions are from that take. It was really like a two-person play, you know, that was just filmed. Um, we we had to learn so much dialogue overnight and basically kind of just took a leap of faith in, in Stuart and in each other and it, it like I could never have imagined that it would turn out as well as it did which is you know just lucky it was all a, a, a stroke of luck for all of us so this is not ideal oh my god hey we shut down the 405 that's what we're, our we story snuck and we're in during Carmageddon and god, just we, uh, we were just lucky you know Madeline jokes but you know She's joking based on some of the truth. We did go up in a, in a helicopter and shot those aerials during Carmageddon before I even wrote the script. Um, I knew I was going to make this movie, and I had the idea. And when Carmageddon was happening, we got an air, we got a, you know, helicopter, and we went up and we shot all these, what we thought would be the biggest traffic jam in history, the most free production value there would be. It would be great, except it completely backfired, because the city did such a great job. You'll hear this once and once only. They did such a great job at forewarning all the citizens that nobody was on the road. I went on a date once with this girl that texted the entire time. It was so annoying. We actually shot it like, you know, during Summer. October, September, October. Oh, yeah. And it was literally this crazy heat wave and they couldn't have the air on during takes. You yeah. know, it was very hard. No when way. we were doing sound checks, they couldn't have the air on. <laughs> Make sure you don't regret this in the morning. When we did that shot glass shot, I mean, it was very complicated. It took four different operators. They're holding it, and then I'm holding it as well, attached to the rig. So if it did, went wrong, it could be the end of Madeline. It was, you know? it was also... There was a lot of trust involved. Yeah. It was also very rinky. Like, it looks all, like, professional, but it was actually very rinky <laughs> dinky to put together <laughs> yeah. because the whole thing wasn't planned. I mean, I had that in a dream the night before. And I came to my That's so cool. my DP and I was like, look, I know we're like on this crazy schedule, but I have this idea and I think I know how I want to shoot this shot. We have a 20 minute window, but we have this amount of time for lunch. Will you guys be willing to work with me during lunch to figure out how we can do this? And they were like, let's do it. And we had 20 minutes to shoot that shot. We did three takes. The first take, she spilled it on her face. The second take, it broke in it. We got it. And then the third take, it, the rig broke. Yeah. Because it was like a pencil, hot glue, and like a paper clip. Yeah. And that's the way this whole thing was put together. This was my first narrative feature. Um, I've directed a lot of other things, um, music videos, commercials, whatnot. But actually, you know, being able to, you know, just create your dream was just being able to work and create something that came from my, our heads. You know, and pulling together this amazing team and everyone looking around that moment where you're looking around and every single person there is all there to try and achieve the same thing. That to me was so such a satisfying moment. I just really need to not be here right now. If you would have snuck out like any decent one night stand, we wouldn't be right.